Well, hello. In uh, the last segment, we talked about technology in, in the public schools, particularly with respect to what's happening at the elementary level and the middle school level. And today we're going to talk about uh, what's going on at Hingham High School, in particular what's going on with a, um, a new initiative, relatively new starting last year, um, called Tech Squad. So my guests today are uh, Katie Gallagher, and Katie is here immediately to my left, and Katie is a library media specialist here at uh, Hingham High School. And next to Katie is Sarah Coughlin, and Sarah Coughlin came to us as a math teacher, but now has become uh, a technology guru here, and uh, is the um, originator of a course that we're going to talk about, and as well, uh, Sarah is um, uh, doing an awful lot of professional development for our, for our staff. So, I want to talk first of all about uh, Tech Squad. And Tech Squad started last year uh, as a new initiative, actually a course. Um, and uh, Sarah Coughlin applied for a grant uh, to the Hingham Ed Foundation and um, made a, a proposal about this course. So, can you tell us, Sarah, a little bit about what prompted this idea? And first of all, and then secondly, um, how was the course, or was the course at the time organized? Because you're now in your second year. Sure. Um, well, thank you to that HEF grant, we were able to start an elective course called the Hingham Tech Squad. And it's all founded on a nonprofit called Gen Yes. The basic concept behind Gen Yes is that students become technology trainers for teachers. Uh, ranging from tech support to long-term projects. We, we have an army of Tech Squad students uh, that help teachers day-to-day -day with technology. The course started last year and students take a one-semester course and they get uh, credit for helping teachers with what we call TAPS, Technology Assisted Projects. Uh, and like I said, that can range from um, a printer being broken to I want to learn everything there is to learn about Google Apps, building websites. Uh, these students really are very, very talented in learning new technologies, uh, problem solving, and a benefit is they also gain those skills at helping uh, people, helping their teachers. So there actually are class meetings every day, and during that time, uh, students are out helping, or is their time beyond? Uh, the, the class time, sure. when so, that would occur. So our Hingham Tech Squad students meet um, for one period a day, and the course is comprised of a variety of activities. Um, they participate in a weekly blog where they discuss current technology in the classroom. Uh, they also build a portfolio page where they kind of document all their work, and it enables teachers access to learn from, from all of their projects. And then the main component are those TAPs. We uh, log through the TAP system and students have to complete TAP hours throughout the semester. The Hingham Tech Squad students mostly complete those TAPs during that class. So it sounds as if uh, with so many different technologies, someone fixing a printer, someone else working on a uh, teacher uh, help on Google Apps or whatever it might be, that a lot of the, um, the actual technology knowledge comes with the students to the class. Is that fair to say? Definitely. Um, we have a, a base number of technologies that we hope that the students leave with. So that would include Weebly, building websites, smart board use, Google Apps. But really it, it's kind of a process throughout the semester based on what teachers need. Mm -hmm. um, these students can learn way faster than than we can as teachers. Um, if there's a new technology that none of us know about, we sit together, we do a little research, and these students are just a, a wealth of knowledge and not afraid to make a mistake. So we put our heads together, we try to learn a little bit about the technology, we try to figure out the best way to help teachers learn about the technology. Um, so starting out, we, we kind of had an idea of the base technologies that would come up. But throughout the past year, I, I couldn't dream that we would reach so many different technologies and competencies. Mm -hmm. um, the, the students, depending on how many taps they have, also have the opportunity to uh, dive into technologies that they're really interested in. So we've had some recent success with coding, um, web design, gaming. Um, we're trying to 
to also have them leave with uh, competencies that they can add to a resume, mm -hmm. real life skills that they can uh, gain interest in and learn a ton about um, using the, the free time that we sometimes have in between tabs. Mm -hmm. So that has been a, a great new resource, not only for our teachers, but for them individually. So uh, when the course started last year, there were two semesters. Mm -hmm. uh, about how many students in each of the semesters? Uh, the first semester we had about uh, 10 students, about the same second semester. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a smaller group this first semester this year, but we have a much larger class uh, set up because of scheduling for next semester. So you mentioned uh, the help desk, mm -hmm. uh, and clearly there with all of these uh, students and all of the teachers and all of the needs and wants, there needs to be a way of processing, uh, I, I would guess. And so the help desk course is for second year students, or are there some students in the help desk that are um, that are t uh, they, they didn't do tech squad last year, I guess is what the question um, is. To answer that, so in general, the idea is that after taking a semester of tech squad, then um, they would be able to be tech squad help desk and work with me in the library um, where I'm able to dispatch them to classrooms mm -hmm. um, when there's something, um, you know, immediate mm -hmm. uh, and necessary like that. Um, but we do have a couple of students um, who came to us already, and they were mm -hmm. seniors, um, with some pretty impressive skills mm -hmm. um, and some impressive experience, too. And so um, for this semester, I, um, you know, it, because I wanted each period covered, um, we did accept those students into the program. Mm -hmm. In general, moving forward, I think we're, it's going to be, um, you know, would like them to be trained specifically through tech squad. Right, so prerequisite. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Series of courses. So. Exactly. Um, and I'm hoping to speak with the students in a bit and uh, find out a little bit more about the kinds of calls they, they take, but how have the teachers reacted uh, to th this availability? Um, I, to me, they, They've been really like just thankful. Mm -hmm. That's how I've seen it. Thankful. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a teacher call in the middle of a lesson where something went wrong, and her lesson was depending on the piece of technology mm -hmm. didn't work. And we got a call, and I was able to send students out to help her and get it back up and running. Mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful because a lot of times that could be me. Um, however, if I'm working with a class of students in the library. Um, it couldn't be me. Mm -hmm. So this um, this makes me sort of more available throughout the building mm -hmm. at a moment's notice, which is right. nice. That's great. Uh, so what are you thinking about for the future? Uh, we, we couldn't be more excited about it. Um, we've had some kind of follow-up projects that have come out of the Tech Squad elective and the mm -hmm. help desk, um, which includes after-school professional development sessions for mm -hmm. teachers. So. Sometimes teachers aren't, classroom teachers aren't available during the day, so we have about 10 sessions planned for after school this year uh, that the Tech Squad students will become competent in, and they can also translate that to a free period during the day. Uh, we were lucky enough again, because of the HEF, um, to have three students come in and set up all of the classrooms, and I can say that there were many happy high school teachers mm -hmm. to come back uh, with just a few days to get ready for school. and. Everything was tested in their classroom. Um, if there were any issues, we were able to kind of compile them and save um, Joe Andrews a ton of time fixing just the, the remaining issues. So that, that was a huge help. Um, we have our students uh, planning an hour of code in December, so to hopefully spread the excitement about coding. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we see a very bright future. I think as technology grows, there's going to be a lot more for classroom teachers like myself to learn. And we have these students that are a wealth of knowledge and are willing to uh, learn and, and help educators. So I'm very excited. Uh, we, we already have a fantastic army of tech squad helpers, and I think um, it's only going to grow. And I have seen that list of the professional development topics and uh, a lot of excitement about that and, and that's open to teachers from from across the district is it? 
Um, right now, we have a few different things going. Uh, we have done a few sessions outside of the high school. We have a series right now that is just for high school mm -hmm. uh, teachers, but I think as the interest grows and the talk uh, surrounding the sessions uh, occurs, that we, we definitely could move around the district. And we should mention, um, you mentioned uh, Joe Andrews and Joe uh, for people who are watching is our technology manager here in town, but there's only one job. <laughs> and uh, in each of the elementary schools, we do have a tech specialist, and at the middle school, we have a technology coordinator who was new last year. So, so there's some help out and about, but in terms of managing uh, things like setup for teachers that can be time consuming and sometimes specialized, depending upon what they teach, um, the more help we can get, uh, the better, and uh, the more we can use Joe for the things that uh, that only he uh, he can do. Mm -hmm. So, so that's uh, important. We should probably also mention that our district has recently become a Google district. So, right. uh, you mentioned things like Google Apps, and I was just playing yesterday with Google Classroom, and mm -hmm. you know, just so many new things that are coming along. You know, we're, we're uh, starting this, um, this fall an initiative at our middle school um, where students will get individual Chromebooks starting in grade six, although we're going to try to get grade six and grade seven this year. So ultimately, those students will come to the high school and, and hope will come with some skills of their own, Great. which may mean the two of you have to change your offerings to, uh, yeah. right, to accommodate uh, kids interest. Right. The, and there will be so much coming along mm -hmm. in the future. I could see a lot of, um, with coding, mm -hmm. um, a lot of teachers using our tech squad and help desk students to develop educational games mm -hmm. based on their own curriculum. And so they could customize games that students could use really at any level um, mm -hmm. for practice. Yeah. There's a lot of interest these days in the coding. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I've been around long enough to remember that uh, we used to teach program mm -hmm. at Hingham High School and, and, and most uh, schools. Uh, and we taught it for a number of years. And then the interest died in that. Um, and so it's interesting to see the coding uh, mm -hmm. come back, even with the youngest children. Absolutely. Uh, one of the clips that uh, was in our prior uh, program on the elementary and middle school was a kindergarten teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, using iPads with kindergarten children, and one of the activities was actually a Age appropriate, of mm -hmm. course, a coding problem. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Program, I'm sorry. Nice. And uh, so, so all of those kinds of things are certainly going to grow in the future. Mm -hmm. And um, we have in the library, uh, my help desk students help manage two different carts full of. There's one of laptops and another of Chromebooks, and these have been given to us by a generous grant from the AGF. Um, but I'm really excited to hear that students are coming up with Chromebooks and we'll be mm -hmm. really prepared for that because mm -hmm. um, my help desk students work with them all the time. Mm -hmm. um, when a teacher books space for the library, that's usually what the students will use, their mm -hmm. Chromebooks, so um, they'll be really on top of that and that'll be a smooth transition. And as recently as a few minutes ago, uh, when we're in the high school library um, and uh, the class periods broke a couple of minutes ago, and right outside the door, uh, there was a line of students who were coming getting something out of a rather large box. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? Okay, you said they're picking up Chromebooks, That's so, you know, it's the first thing they did at the beginning of the class, so obviously they're, uh, they're being well used. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, is there anything that you can think that you'd like to tell us about Tech Squad or about the uh, Help Desk program that I haven't asked you about? I think um, for anyone that's interested, definitely visit our website. It's higgumtechsquad.weebly.com. Um, we, we show that website to everyone, including the teachers, the staff around the district. Um, if you'd like to learn about any of the technologies up there, all the resources that the students put together are available. Um, we, just, we just hope to uh, help more and more people learn and, and hopefully um, gain interest and ask for more help and we'll just continue to grow. And uh, I happened to be here last year one day at a faculty meeting when there was a presentation because the tech squad was joining up with the green team. And the green team is a, a wonderful activity here at the high school and um, very focused, of course, on, on all of the green uh, uh, strategies. 
and it was a plan to teach people, teachers, uh, how to scan documents to reduce the amount of paper. Yeah. So we we really took that concept. Scan if you can was the mm -hmm. the logo and took it to another level. Um, we had four professional development sessions. So. Not only did teachers learn how to scan documents, but they really took it to the next level. They could edit documents, they could build a website, uh, they could host all of their documents in a cloud, Google Drive. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the reaction from teachers was amazing last year um, because it, it, you, need, you need the help to learn new technologies. We as classroom teachers are very busy and to find the resource um, and find the time to learn that new skill and, and with the addition of the students being there, I think mm -hmm. one day one of them was absent and I had to teach the professional development session and they were saying, where's Google Gabby, right? <laughs> but I don't, you know, so I think it's just a very, you know, very comforting uh, environment to have these students available. Um, they do a great job at making it a, li a little less intimidating uh, and it's just been a great a great uh, resource. That Scan If You Can session really went beyond where I ever thought it mm -hmm. could. It's a great resource. And do you think that uh, teachers have continued their good ways in terms of absolutely uh, reducing the amount of paper? We can hope so because we're trying to be a green <laughs> school, right? Absolutely. And, yes, one of and our right. health test students, Tyler, can fill you in on that because he's had to program the um, copy machine for more scanner, scanner people mm. Mm -hmm. because um, you have to put in your email address and he pre-programs it for the teachers okay. so that it's easy. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Thank, thank you. you. Well, welcome back. Um, we are, we're going to talk to two students. Uh, who've been involved in the tech squad now, both of you for two years. And I'm going to ask uh, them to introduce themselves and tell us your name and uh, what grade you're in and, you know, how you got involved or interested in this course when you saw that it was advertised last year in the program of studies. So, Tyler, do you want to start? Right. Uh, I'm Tyler Anderson. I'm a senior this year. Um, I'm part of the help desk program now. Um, I moved to Hingham two years ago. and. Immediately, I saw they had a new technology course they were starting, and that really interested me. Mm -hmm. So I joined with um, Mrs. Coughlin, and I learned everything I needed to know about the school's technologies, and now I'm pretty proficient in it. Great. And you? Uh, hi, I'm Christopher Edwards, and I'm a junior now, grade 11. And I found out about this class from Ms. Coughlin, mm -hmm. and she was in the lunchroom handing out flyers and recruiting <laughs> yeah recruiting and uh and i got a flyer from her i looked at it and i got really excited and interested interested in the course mm -hmm. so i started my sophomore year and now i'm in my second year as a junior mm -hmm. uh, let's stick with you chris for a minute so um you were in interested because you saw the flyer is that because you have a lot of techie stuff at home? Tell, tell us what kind of uh, tools of technology you have. Well, for once, like, uh, we have a touchscreen computer mm. at my house. We got it two years ago, which uh, I was a freshman. I set it up for my mom and my whole family, and yeah. I taught them how to use it. And I came home the day I got the flyer, and I showed them that, and they said I really have a shot at being someone because I'm really skilled in technology. Great, great. And Tyler, um, so you were in the program last year, you said you were feeling new to the high school. Did you come from a school that had some technology activities or courses that students could take? So from where I came from, Connecticut, they didn't have any program like this at all. So um, when I learned about it, my family's very technologically and involved, so I thought it would be a great idea to not only use my skills, but learn more and be able to use them to help teachers. So now this year you're both involved with the help desk, and um, so tell us about the kinds of calls that might come into a uh, help desk. Our, our like number one calls are making 
websites for teachers. Uh -huh. okay. So that, that's our number one call mm -hmm. for us. And our second is, of course, like problems with the computer. Mm -hmm. Like Google Docs, Google applications, if they're having trouble mm -hmm. starting up Google applications for their students, and printers. Mm -hmm. uh, printers. Printers. <laughs> Uh, and, and do you ever get real, a real crisis call? Or, oh my gosh. Rarely. You haven't had one of those. No. Which is good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, uh, when, when teachers are interested in setting up a website, typically do they just want to have a website or do they have very clear ideas about what they would like to have on it? Or is it a mixture of those? They have clear ideas on what they want on their website. They give us an outline mm -hmm. of what they want on their website and we it's set up Weebly, it's called, mm -hmm. and we make their website, and then we teach them how to put stuff on the website, mm -hmm. how to take stuff off, how to put other links onto the website with videos, and how they can run and fix the website up. That must be exciting to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yep. That's great. That's, that's, uh, that's really special. So, um, you were involved in this um, scan, if you can, or is that the yeah, acronym? Yeah, that's correct. No, it's... Well, I'd Scan if you can. Scan uh -huh. if you can. Okay. And that's our initiative to use less paper. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that was um, doing everything through online. We tried to get technology into the classroom. Sometimes we had iPads being used. And it was really cool mm -hmm. just seeing like a, a, the possibility of modernizing things and mm -hmm. being able to help the environment. Mm -hmm. And so you worked with the green team on kind of promoting that. Um, yeah, which, which was really fun because uh, we got to kind of support both programs, um, add in technology with supporting the planet, and it uh, got a lot of interest for both the clubs too. Well, you obviously enjoy what you're doing. You're obviously very good at what you do. So um, is um, thinking about your future, um, do you see technology in your future in a career way? Um, well, I want to go into marketing personally, but mm -hmm. um, I do know that my number one college, Richmond, uh, has a lot of programs just like the Tech Squad, um, and I also know that Tech Squad has really helped me to get support from the college and mm -hmm. will hopefully get me in, but uh, they have a lot of programs there that I could become involved in with their own technology. It's a very technologically influenced school, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they need help with that. And it's a little further off for you, Chris, but what are you thinking about? Well, since I'm a junior, we have to start thinking about college this of year course. and what our career is going to be. And so far, I'm taking a step towards being an electrician. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking a science electrician class. This mm -hmm. class really helps me out a lot. Mm -hmm. And I hope that colleges will take me. I'm looking for a technical, technological mm -hmm. college, mm -hmm. like ITT Tech or around here. You know, it strikes me that in addition to the technology skills that you brought to the program, because mm. clearly the two of you have broad skills, and the things that you've learned uh, from, from the, the teachers here, and the things I guess you learned from each other, um, that there were a lot of technology skills that you picked up in these courses. Can you think about some other skills that may be personal skills that will be beneficial in the future that uh, you may have picked up. I would think, for example, working with adults, you have to develop some mm -hmm. confidence perhaps that you yeah. don't have. So mm -hmm. are there things like that, other kinds of uh, uh, skills or appreciations that you that you've kind of learned along the way because you are working now more with an adult uh, mm -hmm. population of learners? So the scariest thing that can possibly happen is when a teacher calls and you think you know how to fix it and you go down there and you think you've fixed it and nothing's working still. That's the scariest thing. So being able to work on your feet and like trying to um, s solve problems even when you don't know entirely what you're doing, mm -hmm. that's it's really interesting and it's a good thing to learn. It is a good thing to learn, right. And you think of anything to add to that, Chris? Well, helping out with adults these mm -hmm. days. You guys didn't have the tech technology we had when you guys were younger. And it will happen, like, as we grow up, there will be more technology. As the middle schoolers are coming up this year, or next year, and that will bring more technology, technological skill, skills. That's great. Well, thank you very much. It was wonderful to meet you, and you're a very talented young man. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.
different uh, guest, someone that's familiar to most people who know our schools, Lainey Silver, who's director of um, the English department, English and um, literacy uh, from K to 12. And so I guess it would be fair to say, Lainey, that you're kind of new to the technology area. Maybe a technology wannabe. Well, ba yeah, basically you're teaching an old dog new tricks with uh -huh. this technology stuff. And speaking of teaching the old dog new tricks, the students have been doing a lot of that teaching. So tell us about they have, what has well, happened with your life and technology. Okay. Well, um, I have my new best friend, Gabby. I had shown some interest in having a literacy website, and uh, Sarah Coughlin said, I have just the person for you. And she said, Gabby. And uh, Gabby helped me, or, um, and what I mean by that is Gabby made, um, <laughs> a prototype of a district-wide literacy website for the K through 5 teachers. And um, then the elementary literacy coordinator, Leslie Flanagan, took Sarah Coughlin's course and kind of finished it up and added some things to it, and we just rolled it out at our um, at the grade level meetings, and the teachers were very excited about it because now it's an opportunity for all kindergarten through grade five teachers to um, communicate with one another, share their successes, ask questions. Um, we've posted all kinds of forms and all kinds of protocols on a form, so it's a very exciting thing. Right. Yep. So, what else have you learned in the world of technology? Well, I am now a um, devotee of Google, everything Google. Um, Sarah came in one day and took my entire network drive and made it into a Google drive. So I never, um, I never say anything except to Google. So I, I guess you could say I'm kind of living in the cloud now. Ah. I've been accused of that before, <laughs> but now it's true. Now it's true. That's terrific. Yeah. And how did the teachers uh, respond um, to the, the elementary uh, program that you're just talking about? Well, I think with any new thing, uh, it's going to take a while to get used to. Um, we posted a couple of comments on the blog um, after the meeting, and the responses have been trickling in mm -hmm. from them. But I think once the conversations get going, it will just beget new conversations and more conversations. But there was just a lot of um, interest mm -hmm. in uh, people saying things like, oh, this will, this will be great. This will be a great place to you know, get some ideas and uh, get some helpful uh, suggestions, especially since we're launching um, a new writing program and you know, looking toward you know, other changes at the elementary level. Right. And of course, um, many people know about PARC or uh, a test that will be the successor to MCAS that may be called PARC or something else, and that our, our testing will be uh, online before we know it. Um, so certainly, um, teachers need to know a lot about uh, electronic exactly. medium yes. for testing, and they haven't been experienced with that. And this is a place where we can put sample items from the new park test so that teachers can help prepare students for it mm -hmm. and other things like that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of potential for it. So, you know, another way that we're trying to get teachers up to date, um, and uh, certainly the various department directors have been very uh, supportive and about and, and very creative, I think, in terms of uh, somehow integrating that into their regular department structure. Well, good luck on your journey thank to you. the cloud and back, and thank you very much for joining with us today. Thanks for having me. Well, I have three additional guests, and they're all Hingham High School students. We're going to chat more with them about uh, the help desk and the tech squad and all the other interesting things that are going on here in terms of technology. So I'm going to let the students introduce themselves, uh, and I would ask you folks all to uh, tell us your name, what grade you're in, um, whether you're in the, um, the, the uh, tech squad uh, class, the, or whether you're on the help desk this year, um, and let us get to know you a little bit better. So Billy, why don't we start sure. with you? So my name is Billy Lincoln. I'm a current senior here at Hingham High School. Uh, I'm in the tech squad. Uh, and I'm the founder and team captain of the robotics team. So I'm Gabby, and I'm a junior this year, and this is my second year in the help desk in Tech Squad. I'm Andre. I'm a senior in Hingham High School, and this is my first year in uh, Hingham Tech Squad. Thank you. 
Uh, Gabby, I know that you're fairly new to Hingham High School, yes. uh, and uh, that you had some technology experience, uh, coursework or whatever in your prior school. Can you tell us a little bit um, about that? In my prior school, we did a what's here is Compact, which was just a program to learn about like Microsoft Word, mm -hmm. Excel, and all like the basics of that, mm -hmm. of those programs. And then we also had a different program which is similar to Tech Squad, where we just did like fixing computers, printers, and all all the technology in the school. And then come to Hingham, I found out when I was creating my schedule, oh, they have a new program which was Hingham Tech Squad. And I was like, this could be cool. Mm -hmm. And joining it, I learned even more stuff, more computer applications such as um, Google Apps, Weebly, and other photography like. Mm -hmm. Great, great. And Andre, uh, we heard from the uh, other young men that uh, that I interviewed that sometimes Mrs. Coughlin goes to the cafeteria to recruit people for this class. Were you someone who was recruited, or did you have another um, way of I, getting there? Well, you see, this was actually one of my electives because I was getting I'm like really into technology. That's one of the things I'm planning on going to college. And I figured, oh, why not? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why you're here. Okay. And what about you, Billy? I know that you, uh, I've actually seen your program yeah. on, uh, on cable mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the information about rob robotics and mm -hmm. what, a great, uh, what a great activity that is here. So you kind of came into this with a lot of prior interest yes. in technology. Yes, and other people that have been in Tech Squad last year told me about it. So mm -hmm. Uh, as soon as I had room my schedule this year, I was like, sign me up. Mm -hmm. so, I was right. excited for it. Right. And I know that uh, this year, particularly, um, there are a lot of uh, in service programs that are available for teachers. That you guys are all involved in that. Um, are are, are the, all three of you involved in that professional development uh, mm -hmm. effort for teachers? Yeah. We, um, we work with Ms. Coughlin on designing uh, what we feel that the teachers. Um, could use um, uh, in their classrooms, mm -hmm. um, Google Apps, Google Drive, um, anything that teachers can use in the classroom to better our education and students uh, in the future. So mm -hmm. it, it works out pretty well for us mm -hmm. and the teachers as well. Were any of you involved in the, uh, the setting up of teacher computers this fall? I know that we had a, a foundation grant and then we had uh, three, three students, I think, who helped to set up. It was me, Tyler Anderson, and Pat Schofield this summer. We came in two weeks before school started, mm -hmm. and then with the help of Ms. Coughlin, she set up the whole like map of the school so that mm -hmm. way we can go around, set up the computers, make sure they work, they turn on mm -hmm. um, the printers and everything, just to make sure, just to make it easier for the teachers when they come in. One, they Ms. Coughlin isn't hassled with all these calls about like the computer not working. And then it's kind of like a welcome back gift mm -hmm. to them also. Oh, that's a nice way to think of it, a welcome back gift. Great. Um, Andre, of all of the, the kinds of things that the Tech Squad has done, is there a favorite uh, activity, favorite project that you would like to tell us about? Um, currently it's TAPS, which are technology-assisted like projects, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's basically when we are given an assignment, like say a teacher needs help with like using a smart board or her computer is not inputting any sound. We go down to their classroom and like correct a problem and then write a report on it afterwards of what we've done mm -hmm. to like fix it. Great, great. Um, I have to let you talk a little bit about the robotics team. Yeah. Uh, and we should put in a plug. So we so robotics team um, is trying to raise money yes. because it's quite an expensive program uh, and certainly spend some funding. And I think the Med Foundation helped you out initially. Yes. Um, so, how is your fundraising going? Uh, it's a work in progress. Um, we're trying to secure a, um, a corporate sponsor um, because with corporate sponsors they're able to provide not only monetary uh, funds to us but also resources and um, professional engineers. Okay. Um, so that's what one of our main goals for the season as a second year team is to secure a, um, a corporate sponsor so you know, we stay as a team. and. Uh, we don't just die off, and that we stay as part of uh, as Hingham's, you know, education as, as long as we can. So, mm -hmm. great, um, and um, it's a fairly new activity at Hingham High School. Uh, how about how many students involved? We have this year. We have about twenty-five students involved. Um, 
Um, we had a lot of interest after last season of students wanting to know more about the program and what it is and how they can use classroom uh, knowledge and put in the robot and how people can have even no um, knowledge about technology or engineering and still be an integrate part of the team and you know work together and life skills that people wouldn't even realize that would work in technology and education that they can use. Great. So. And Gabby, I know you have a nickname. <laughs> And so, um, uh, tell, tell us your nickname, uh, and, and, and tell us why that uh, is the name that has been attributed well, to you. The nickname came last year when I was new, and it's Google Gabby, and after getting new with the program, new with the um, class, I just found myself going towards Google applications. So, I would always take tabs with Google problems. I'd help with setting up Google Drive on computers if someone didn't understand how Google Docs worked. And then last year we had a professional development session totally applied to Google applications. Since it's a very new and dense topic, a lot of teachers had trouble with it. So I helped Ms. Ms. Coughlin for about three, about three days on helping teachers with the topic. And we also reached out to the school department and some of the people in town hall who needed also needed help on Google Drive and Gmail and Google Calendar. So then I kind of got the names Google Gabby for. Uh -huh. So I need to talk to you further because <laughs> I've just started playing with Google Classroom, and um, it's slow going. But I'm sure you can be helpful to me. Uh, so 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 you're no, known as Google Gabby. Does that mean that everybody in Tech Squad kind of has that one? particular kind of technology that uh, that is kind of a favorite. How about you, Andrea? Well, what technology is, is, is the one that you're most interested in? Um, I feel like anything would like really work for me. I'm more into like uh, game designing mm -hmm. and like computer sciences, which is why I'm really interested in learning like JavaScript mm -hmm. and like Google applications. So I that see. way I can like get to like design games as a like not just as a hobby, but as like also a career. Mm -hmm. And I'm also checking out this site called uh, ID Tech and Tech Rocket, which I b we believe will like uh, help us get a better understanding of how those things will like work. So, mm -hmm. okay. so you clearly see technology in your future. What about you, Gabby? I do see technology in my future. Currently, I am looking for colleges that have either computer science or some type of technical engineering, mm -hmm. just for a gateway. Mm -hmm. And Billy? Uh, I'm going to be pursuing electrical engineering in California. Ah, got it all planned out. Yes, I do. That's <laughs> terrific. That, 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 is, uh, that is excellent. Yeah. Um, but the, we interviewed uh, uh, some other students uh, uh, earlier, and I asked them that certainly you all have wonderful technology skills, mm -hmm. a lot to offer in that area, um, and, and a lot of interest in continuing. Uh, acquiring these skills, but what other skills beyond the technology skills do you think that you've uh, gained by being part of Tech Squad and the help desk and you know, interactions with adults, that kind of thing? Um, can you think of other skills that you could say, boy, if I hadn't taken that course, I would not have been as... I would whatever. say public speaking because Last year, in order to like, communicate with the teachers who did this thing called Tech Tips, and you would go to the faculty meetings and you would speak in front of all the teachers in the school. Mm -hmm. So it was a good confidence booster, speaking in front of everyone, and then I don't think I would be able to like, publicly speak or give speeches or anything like that if it wasn't for like going through Hangar Tech School and getting mm -hmm. that little fear out of my head. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think that um, you know our team building skills that we we have we've built since you know the first week of school. I think it's it's served us pretty well, and um, we're always working on the same projects together with other teachers. So when we can collaborate on a uh, a project together, it's it's really neat to see something like that in use that we can implement in the outside world when we're out of high school and out of college. So problem solving. Yeah, problem team. solving. Absolutely. Right. Mm, yeah, definitely a lot of cooperation skills, just like getting to know people and like helping them with their problems, which I believe will like definitely help us in, later on in the long run. And of course, assist with technology assisted too can like really be a big help. Right, that's terrific. Well, thank you all for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Really?